Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at taking our metronome instrument and turning it into like a full-fledged synthesizer in some ways. This is one of the great things about Logic, how we can take just about any sound source and make it into an instrument. In this case, we're going to be using the Glopfgeist, which has been around a long time. It's our metronome. It's really just designed to give you the tempo. But in this case, because it can be loaded as an instrument, let me actually come through. I've got a bunch of stuff happening here. Let me just turn it all off for a moment so you can hear the original. Because it can be in an instrument slot, MIDI can control the pitch. So it actually has the ability to have some tonality to it. What we've done is add seven different things here. to change its sound, make it something else. And so I want to walk through what we did here, what we added, and then just pose a question to you of what can you take to make it a musical instrument that maybe wasn't designed as an actual musical instrument before that. So we have a modulator first, and this is controlling the tonality of the actual click. So it just gives it a little dip up from less tonality to more as it goes. So it gives a little bit more of an attack. Super simple. And that whole effect, the modulator, is essentially like the envelope generator of a synthesizer. So that's how I'm using it there. I use another one of these with the LFO, another synthesis tool. And this one is controlling the exciter here. So the exciter... It's the frequency that's on here. So Exciter, what it's going to do is look at the harmonic contents that, that's there, and it's going to add some of it. And I'm just having that modulate quickly here with a, like essentially a sample and hold. So it's a random generator, random number generator. And so it's going through and just giving us different frequencies. I have the harmonics up to above 90%, and we have both the dry and the wet. So that gives a little bit of grittiness. Then what I wanted to do is spread it out a little bit. So with the stereo spread, let me turn this one off for a second. You can hear how wide that gets when this is turned on. And I have the upper inverted, so that way you maintain more of a mono compatibility. Then I've got chroma verb. And with Chroma Verb, what we're doing is just adding some space. Now, if I turn off the very last thing, you'll hear more of it. Now, I've got this set up right down here in the dual mono mode. And so I'm actually altering the mid and the side differently. Right now, they're coupled together so I can make some global changes. But with the mids, you can see I've got the dry and the wet set, well, the little bit more dry, less wet. On the sides, I have less dry and more wet. This also widens it out. But then I've got the size and density and the decay coupled together so that they're all the same in both. Okay, so once I had that, I didn't actually want the tail of it. I just wanted to add a little bit more body to the sound. So after the reverb, I've got the enveloper here with the room killer setting and then all that does is get rid of any tails falling below the threshold. So here's before. So we get the size of the reverb in the moment, but we don't get the tail of it to add time. So we get a little bit of that slap and the other part that's really activating the reverb sound without the long tail. And then last but not least, I have an arpeggiator on here. And this ties it all together, makes it more of a motion sequence. And there we have this full instrument with all of these different pieces, which would be in a synthesizer normally. 
things like the arpeggiator, the envelopes, the LFOs, the reverb, all of that stuff would fit into a normal modern synthesizer. But because this instrument doesn't have any of that, we add it all on using MIDI effects and audio effects and then tie them all together. So this is a great way to really build a sound from something that maybe wasn't really designed as a sound source, but now we can do almost anything we want with it. So what would you do? What sound would you take and make into a synthesizer or some other sound source to create new and interesting soundscapes or instruments or whatever? Leave that in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and if you aren't already, subscribe. Okay, that's it for today. As you can tell, we just did a video yesterday and one last Friday. I think we're going to do one every day this week because after that, I'm going to be gone for a week in China doing a course there in Shenzhen. So definitely keep coming back this week and then you can enjoy a whole week off.